Are we ready? All right, well, good afternoon. Um, everybody remembers what happened last June when more than 30,000 basements uh, in this city backed up. I want to talk about what happened then, but we promised that we would start some actions uh, immediately in the hopes of, even as early as this summer, offering some protection. So I'm joined today by the head of the Detroit Water and Sewer Department, Gary Brown, and the council member from a district heavily affected, uh, Letitia Johnson from the 4th District. Let me show you what we're going to do. And we are ready uh, to start a demonstration program. Never tried this before. But we're ready to go into the basements in two neighborhoods, see if we can't harden those basements, see how it works out. And we had about a dozen neighborhoods in this city that are low-lying areas vulnerable to flooding in uh, times of torrential rains. If we can work it out in these first two, our plan is to move quickly to the rest of the affected suburb or subdivisions in the city. So, uh, and council member, I'll slide over here. And so, here's what we've got. We've got a um, stormwater system that is built uh, for a lower level of rain than we have seen. Uh, and about 1.7 inches of rain before the uh, sewage starts to spill into the Detroit River, uh, but about four inches before it hits the basements. And two storms have exceeded that four inch level, but they've occurred in the last eight years. And we want you to see these are the largest 24 hour rainstorms in Detroit history. Uh, and you'll see the pattern of them that in August of 2014, where we got four and a half inches that set a record, we had a presidential disaster area declaration. It was the largest storm we'd had in history. It was dwarfed by what we had last June, almost six inches, and again, another presidential declaration. And we're glad to have the president's help, but what we need to do is figure out what we can do to protect our residents from having uh, experienced the damage to their basements in the first place. And so what this city has done has been enormous. So the city has built over the years nine retention basins that stores 250 million gallons of stormwater until the rain stops. Uh, you've seen them around the city. They're along the Detroit River and the Rouge River. A billion and a half dollars was spent so that when the storms come, we could store the extra rain capacity here safely, treat it, and then release it in a clean way into the river. Uh, and so when you see a drainage charge on your bill and you say, why did I get a drainage charge? Uh, it, was, it is to pay for your share of all of this uh, capacity that the city of Detroit has built. Uh, and it was built to what we thought was a 100-year storm capacity. I want to talk a minute about the combined sewer system we have, and most longtime Detroiters understand this. Uh, but because Detroit and some of the inner ring suburbs were built early, they were built on a combined sewer system. What you uh, flush down your toilet and runs down your sink mixes with the rain that comes into the storm drains uh, out on the street. They mix together. In the newer suburbs, they are separated. And so what this means in a combined system is when it's a dry day, nobody has any issues. There's plenty of room for the sewage to come out of your house, be treated, no problem. On a rainy day, these pipes fill up because the water running off the street fills up the pipes. And at first, we release it out uh, primarily into the Detroit River, but also in some other overflow locations. Uh, and that's an issue. On the days it crosses four inches, it fills these pipes up and backs right up into the basements and basically to the, to the lowest lying areas in the city where the water runs. We know what the pattern is, and even though we have what is supposed to be a once in a hundred year storm, it's becoming clear to us that with climate change, we can't tell you it's not going to happen again and again. We've now had our two biggest storms eight years apart. So what do we do about it? Uh, our low-lying neighborhoods, uh, it was just really in a matter of hours, 32,000 basements backed up. Uh, President Biden 
I was good enough, we got $100 million provided to the residents. But I've been in a lot of these neighborhoods. The residents didn't want to throw out all their stuff, didn't want to have to get a new furnace, didn't want to have to clean and get a check later. It was better to have a check later than not have a check later. They want to know they can use their basements and not be at risk of this happening again. And today, we cannot tell you that if you're in those low-lying areas. And so, historically, what the city would have done, and any city would have done in this kind of capacity, is build bigger pipes, uh, bigger retention basins. It had taken 20 years to do it. I haven't found a single neighbor who wants to wait that long to deal with this. So we said, OK, instead of trying to rebuild the whole system, what if we targeted the neighborhood with the 30,000 homes that had been hit in 2021? Many of them were hit in 2014 as well. A lot of the same houses uh, got hit twice for the same reason. Could we zero in on those 30,000 30, houses in those 11 or 12 neighborhoods and protect those basements? And that's the demonstration program we're announcing today and inviting people in the first two neighborhoods to sign up. And we're calling this hardening the basement. So even though the rainstorm may be outside, we want to protect your basement from the sewage backing up. So who's going to be eligible? Single family home, two family flats and duplexes, if you're in these areas. So it's not for commercial businesses, but it is for the residential facilities. Our first phase, which we are starting right now, is in the Victoria Park neighborhood on the east side and the aviation sub-neighborhood on the west side. We're going to try it uh, in two different locations, two very different neighborhoods, two very different neighborhood associations, uh, and we wanted to do it in those, in those two kind of areas. Then we're going to get through that uh, this late this spring, early this summer. Once we work out the bugs in these two neighborhoods, we're going to move as quickly as we can to offer the same uh, kind of support for every other neighborhood that we think is at risk. Here's what you will be offered from the city. It's being funded from uh, the American Rescue Plan. Again, we have to thank the president and our supporters in Congress. But it'll be up to $6,000 in support for your basement, depending on your need to protect you. And so what will start is you'll have a conversation with a plumber who we will hire and we will send in, and they'll talk to you about why uh, the water, the sewage is backing up in your basement and what your options are. So you'll start with that conversation. They'll do a camera inspection of your lateral sewer line. That's the line that comes in under your grass that runs to the house. As many Detroiters know, if you have a break in that line, which is your property, you've got problems all the time. But we need to make sure that the line uh, running from the house is in good shape. Uh, you're going to have to disconnect downspouts so that we don't have the storm water uh, running into the system. Uh, and Gary Brown's going to talk about a backwater valve uh, if, in fact, we know that the sewer line is in good shape and possibly a sump pump. Gary's going to take you through the details of that. So once we know that your sewer line coming from the house is solid and clear, then we know we can go ahead and fix the basement. Uh, and so here is the plan. The city is going to go into these neighborhoods, and we'll pay 90% of the cost. This will significantly increase the value of your house. But if it's owner-occupied, we'll pay 90% of the expense. If it's a rental property and you're a landlord, we'll pay 80% of the expense. Uh, we could say we want the landlords to do it, uh, but if the landlords refuse and the tenants, as I talked to a lot of tenants this summer who lost everything, uh, it doesn't do the tenants any good. So we're going to offer 80% of the cost for the landlords, uh, and you don't even have to pay the 10% if you're in the RAP program because you are low income with DWSD. So if you can't afford the 10%, you can get enrolled in the RAP program and you won't have to pay uh, anything, and we will take you through uh, that process. Uh, and so that is the way that we are going to approach this. Uh, and with that, uh, well, let me talk about where we're going to go next. So this is our first phase. So Victoria Park along the Detroit River on the east side, Aviation Sub over along the Dearborn border on the west side. We are going to start taking your enrollments now. If you own 
Uh, the houses, 400 or so in the aviation sub, 100 or so in Victoria Park. If you own one of those houses, you can be enrolled now, and we would like to get in in the next six months and harden your basements. We are going to be ready to go uh, quickly. And then by this summer, when we work out the bugs in the first two neighborhoods, we are expecting to move on to Cornerstone Village, East English Village, Jefferson Chalmers, Morningside, Maross Morang on the east side, and on the west side, Barton McFarland, Chansey Condon, uh, Garden View, and Warrendale. If you had your uh, neighborhood had its sewage back up, you know who you are. Uh, we are going to move through the rest of those neighborhoods as fast as our contractors uh, will allow. So right now, we need to move on Aviation Sub in Victoria Park. Let's get this program going. Uh, and then we're going to get to the other neighborhoods in the city. We think this can be something we can do within two years as opposed to 10 or 15 years. And uh, what we're going to do is make this into a video, put it on YouTube so people in the neighborhoods can see the long version of this. And I'm going to turn this over to Gary Brown, who's going to take you through the technical aspect of how this will work. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Backwater valve. And so in your home, uh, when you uh, flush a toilet or empty a sink, a bathtub, it runs down a pipe to the lateral sewer line, which is up under your basement floor. And that line runs all the way out, in most cases, to the alley and connects to DWSD, the city's sewer. And that line is designed to go one way, out to the sewer from your house until there's a big storm and there's a surcharge and sewer and storm water is pushed backwards back into your home. The device that you see is designed to stop that. A flap will come up and stop the flow from surcharging backwards into your basement, keeping sewage out and lowering the risk of a public safety uh, hazard. And so what you see in the, pit, in the picture furthest to my right is a backwater valve that is under the basement floor. And then the second photo has the backwater valve that's in, case, in a casing. And then the top is placed on it in the last, uh, in the last picture um, with the cement floor that has been uh, re-cemented. So you see, there's about a two by two foot area of your basement floor that has to be torn out. The contractor will only restore the cement floor. The homeowner must maintain and clean this valve. So the plumber will leave you with a manufacturer's recommended uh, way of cleaning the valve. Do not use sink, drains, washer, dishwashers, during rain events for backwater valves to block sewage from backing up. So obviously, if there's a flap that's going to stop it from coming back into the house, you don't want to open it up by using uh, any of your, your sinks or, or your dishwasher. How the program works. DWSD will contact directly for improvements. DWSD will contract for the plumbing services directly. DWSD will not reimburse your contractor or plumber. So you have to use one of the city contracted plumbers. No reimbursement for previously installed backwater valves or sump pumps. The basement backup protection program will not repair or replace private sewer lateral service lines, nor will we repair other private plumbing in the home. If you need your private lateral sewer line repaired or replaced, do not apply until the work is complete. Make sure you get a permit. And that, that permit really protects the homeowner so that our code enforcers can come out and make sure that the job was done right. The program only helps prevent future backups in basement. It does not cover your private sewer, uh, lateral sewer line fixing basement foundations, gaps, or cracks, 
additional or alternative power sources for a sump pump. Remember, most of these events happen during storms and the power goes out. So you may need a battery or solar powered backup in order for your sump pump to work when the power goes out. That's going to be the homeowner's responsibility. Basement flooring, other than restoring the basement cement, we're not going to be able to replace tile or wood flooring. The customers will have to do that. What is the process? And we've tried to make this as simple as possible. Go to DetroitMish.gov slash basement protection for program information and eligible neighborhoods. And that should be live uh, at, at 1.30 today. If eligible, application will be online. And please, apply now. If you're in one of the 11 neighborhoods, apply now. Our plumbing contractors need to understand the capacity. How many people do they need to hire to be ready to get this job done? BC performs courtesy inspection to determine conditions in the home. A plumber inspects the home and has a conversation with the homeowner, uploads a quote to DWSD, and gives a copy to the homeowner. Again, we want the homeowner to have a frank conversation with the licensed plumber to determine the best course of action for your house. Does the backwater valve go inside? Does the backwater valve go outside? That's a decision that you'll make with the licensed plumber. Homeowner pays DWSD deposit unless income qualified through the RAP program as homeowner occupant and then signs a waiver. The application is then approved. BC issues a permit to the plumber. The work is performed. BC comes back, does a final inspection to make sure that the work was done right and that you're satisfied and verifies that the permit was actually issued. DWSD will then pay the contractor after verification that the work has been completed. So what if I'm a low income and own the home I live in? If you live in a targeted neighborhood, you will be eligible. DWSD will verify you are enrolled in the RAP and waive the deposit. If not enrolled in RAP, call Wayne Metro at 313-368-9727. 313-386-9727 to apply to receive benefits, including $25 water bill monthly credit for up to two years Lifetime, if you're a senior person with a disability or veteran, then get the uh, deposit waived. After successful inspection, DWSD assigns a plumber, will visit to determine the work to be performed, then discuss the estimate with you. Sign the waiver before the work begins. What if I'm a landlord and own three rental houses in Detroit? Example, I own two rental houses in Warndale and one in Russell Woods. Landlord can only apply to the program for the houses in the targeted neighborhood. In this case, the two houses in Warndale. Once pre-inspection takes place and passes, plumber assigned by DWSD will visit each house to determine the work to be performed under the program menu of services then discuss with you the estimate. What if I'm a landlord and own three rental houses in Detroit? Well, the landlord pays 20% 20, 20 of the cost for each eligible rental house based on the plumber's estimate. Landlords are not eligible for a deposit waiver. BC will also register the landlord for the rental properties if not already registered. Landlord will sign the waiver for each house enrolled and, will, and work will begin by the plumber. Again, apply now. What about other neighborhoods in Detroit? Water service lines and sewer line warranty coming this spring in April. Many Detroit houses 
sewer line is more than 80 years old. I've lived in my house for 32 years. The house is 92 years old. That lateral sewer line is hanging by a thread. And I know, I know our, our councilwoman lives in my same district and I bet her house is just as old. And so if you live in one of those houses, you really should think about taking advantage of this program. These houses may have basement backups even on dry days. This spring, a warranty service provider will begin offering homeowners a water service line and sewer line protection program for a monthly fee of less than $8 per house. This will substantially reduce costs to repair or replace a broken sewer line on the property replacement can be more than $10,000. So again, consider taking advantage of this great program. Basement backup and flood handbook. If you go to the website uh, that I outlined before, available on www.detroitmich.gov slash basement protection. We've put a handbook uh, on display that will walk you through all the causes of basement backups. Great information in this handbook. So uh, if you can download it uh, off the internet, uh, fine. If you can't, we'll have a number available and we'll mail you one out. Water assistance program available to Detroit households. And, and this, is, this is really important. I mean, I, I, I am so proud of the water residential assistance program. I, I challenge the media all the time to fact check this. This is the most comprehensive, compassionate, robust water assistance program in America in any utility, in any utility. RAP is the region's water affordability program qualified at or below 200% of federal poverty level. That's a, a family of four can make up to $53,000 a year and be able to apply for this program. You get $25 monthly bill credit for up to two years, lifetime for seniors, persons with disabilities, and veterans. You'll also get up to $1,200 toward your, past, your, your past due balance, and up to $2,000 in minor plumbing repairs if you're eligible for the RAP program. Apply through Wayne Metro, 313-386-9727. Wayne Metro has four more programs for low-income households. We have the COVID Emergency Rental Assistance, CIRA, for utility bill payment help. It will pay up to $1,500 to $2,500 based on your household size. We have a low-income household water assistance program, LIWA, up to $650 to help pay your water bill. And uh, we just recently received approximately $10 million that we have on hand for that LIWA program. We have the State Emergency Relief Fund, SEER will pay up to $350 on your water bill. And finally, there's a new program that's just coming out called the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund, MIHA. Uh, the amount is to be determined. And so there's no reason why any resident in the city of Detroit should be struggling to pay a water bill when there's this kind of assistance available. Simply call Wayne Metro and set up the appointment. That's the Basement Backup Protection Program. And uh, with that said, I'd like to introduce uh, Council Member let me, let me So let me do this. So uh, a number of the neighborhoods that are primarily affected are on the east side. And you can see by how comprehensive that information is, the only way we're going to get the information out is if we have help from the city council members and their staffs as well, because it's going to be a lot of one-on-one -on -one uh, conversation with residents and uh, there is no city council member more versed or, or uh, committed uh, to dealing with water and, and sewer issues uh, than the council member from the fourth district Letitia Johnson
Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate that. And it's so great to get the details of this program because I had already started making phone calls to see if we can address the, um, the gap in funding for low income residents. And I'm so glad that now I just get to direct them to the RAP program and make sure they're signed up so we don't need to do that. So we, we definitely appreciate that. Um, I'm really excited to be here because as the mayor indicated, when he showed the map, all of the, the houses on the east side or the neighborhoods on the east side were in District 4. And I do know that um, District 4 was dealt a horrible blow uh, in the June 25th, 26th uh, water backup. I was in the thick of campaigning during the time and, and didn't encounter one neighborhood that hadn't experienced a backup in the basement. And so I'm excited to go now and share this program with residents. Um, I can speak for Jefferson Chalmers residents who have endured this issue for nearly a decade now. Um, and so glad to see that it is part of the pilot program and really expanding throughout the entire Jefferson Chalmers neighborhood to make sure that people get the assistance that they, they absolutely need. Um, we know that this, this is one step in addressing this issue. I know that the Detroit Water and Sewers Department is already working in the Jefferson Chalmers community, um, working with um, replacing a lot of the sewer lines in that area, looking at uh, the, the connection to the Detroit River. And so we are grateful for all of the work that's happening in Jefferson Chalmers. Um, I would ask to the residents that you be patient um, because I know construction is is a tremendous deal and an effort to uh, deal with. Um, but I will be here to uh, make sure that we communicate with our residents as we go throughout the process and make sure that we are um, understanding of the process and knowing that in the long run, this is going to benefit not only the Jefferson Chalmers community, but everyone in the entire city of Detroit as we do these improvements. And so I, I just say thank you to uh, the mayor to the Detroit Water and Sewers Department for even entertaining this program because we know that it is doing work within our private homes, um, but it means so much to prevent these water backups. Um, we know that a lot of our residents may not have been able to afford this, but as uh, Director Gary Brown indicated, our sewer system is aged. And we know that there is a lot of work that needs to be done and just so grateful that we can get started in addressing the situation and making sure that residents can breathe a little easier as uh, spring season is upon us and, and as we continue to go throughout springs um, in the city of Detroit. So this is a tremendous amount of work. Um, and I just applaud the efforts. I will be there, of course, on the ground to facilitate any questions um, within my district, as I'm sure all of my colleagues will as we move this program forward. So delighted to be here, delighted to see this program being implemented because it has been uh, very difficult for a lot of District 4 residents. Thank you. And uh, I know, council members, as we go along, you will point out any improvements that we need to make uh, in this uh, program. So here's, here's where we stand today. Our, our contractors, where do we stand in the bidding process? We, we have signed contracts for six of, uh, eight of the... Uh, and have they been sent to city council? They will be okay. uh, this week. Okay, so we have bid this work. Eight plumbing contractors have signed contracts. Those contracts are going up to city council this week. We don't want you to have to find your own plumber. Uh, we've got the advantage of using the city's purchasing power to get the best rates and have eight qualified people. And so assuming that gets approved in the next couple of weeks, uh, we are going to be out in, in visiting neighbors by when? March? By March. So in March, we're going to be out to your house if you're in Aviation Suburb Victoria Park. And so the plan is going to be this, uh, that go in, Get your application done. We're working with the neighborhood associations in both areas. You may well have already heard about this by now, which is great, through your neighborhood association. Soon as the plumbing contractors are approved by council, uh, they will be out to see you. 
We're going to try to get the work done in these first two neighborhoods over the next four or five months. We will sit down with council at that point, assess what we've done, and then roll it out to the other nine neighborhoods uh, as quickly as practical. And with that, we'll take any questions. Hi, this is Mr. Thurman at the Free Press. Um, so I'm wondering if you can kind of talk about how many homeowners you expect will be helped with this program altogether? All right, we're going to see. So we'll know out of the first, we're, we're looking at 400 or so in aviation and 100 or so in Victoria Park. So we'll have 600 eligible in the first phase. And when the first phase is done, we'll, give, we'll have a very good idea of what the uh, interest level is. There are some homeowners who have already done uh, 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 the back check valves that have already done uh, some pumps. Uh, there are others who've never heard of them. So if you ask us in about uh, 90 days, we'll be able to give you a good estimate out of the overall 30,000, how many we think will participate. And I just want to hone in on the ARPA funding piece. So I know that this program is funded by ARPA dollars. So just to clarify, um, is it 2.4 million in ARPA funding for the two pilot neighborhoods? And then overall, is the whole program 15 million? How much is ARPA funded? Well, right now, what's, what's funded is the pilot program phase one, uh, $2.4 million. And uh, we'll, we'll see where we go from there. But um, I, I do anticipate $15 million being available for the other okay. nine uh, neighborhoods. So that's 2.4 in ARPA funding? For, yes. OK. And then um, just in terms of the other funding, like how do you anticipate kind of where is that funding going to be coming yeah. from? Do it, you have any ideas and it's, plans? It's, it's still to be determined. Uh, it, it could be ARPA. It could be out of other funding sources, as you know. There are lots of buckets uh, of money that are being uh, planned to come out of Washington and through the state, but we'll figure it out. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, we don't anticipate there being any funding issue getting through all 11 of these uh, neighborhoods. Hi, Mayor. Um, just curious about the timing is my only question today. In regard to, you referenced 2014, uh, the councilwoman talked about nearly a decade-long issue. Is it primarily funding that allows you to do this now, or, or obviously it's been an issue here for seven years plus when these <laughs> rains have come through? Well, you have multiple issues. In Jefferson Chalmers, they've got flooding coming from the river onto the street, so you've got a different situation there. They've been hit uh, both from the street and from the, the backups in the sewers. Uh, but what we've seen is this. In 2014, we got a once-in-a-hundred-year storm. Eight years later, we got a much bigger storm. Uh, and uh, we just think with climate change, we have to look at this differently. We can sit around and say it was a fluke, it'll be another 100 years, uh, but I don't have any confidence that's the case. So after last summer, we looked at this and said, uh, you could tear the city apart and put down much bigger pipes, which would take decades, or we could figure out the low-lying areas that are, that are having the basement flooding problems and we could help those basements. And so this really was a strategy that came out of uh, the experience in June. We think we understand now where the basement flooding risks are, and we think it's easier to zero in on those 11 neighborhoods and, and harden the basements than to tear up the city and try to, to build a whole new system. But is it too simplistic to say that after 2014 than we had last summer that gave everybody a different realization of, of we have to handle this differently, or is that right. not accurate? 2014 was a once in a hundred year storm. Right. Uh, at that point, we did not have any reason to think it was gonna happen again. What is really troubling is that the 2021 storm wasn't just a little bit bigger. It, it was almost 20% bigger than any storm we've had in history. And so we are interpreting the 2016 storm. And we had a couple other major rain events uh, in July and August, even after the worst of them, uh, we are assuming that climate change is going to give us challenges we have not seen before. And so uh, all of us are making educated guesses. It might be that we harden these basements and we don't get uh, another storm like this for another 100 years. But I don't have any confidence of that, and I'm not going to say, as I, I went to every one of these neighbors talking to citizens, all they wanted to do was, they said to me, what are you going to do to protect us the next time? And telling them God sent a 100-year storm wasn't a comforting answer to any of them. Maybe Councilmember Johnson found that to be comforting, but I didn't find a single person who thought that was a good answer. They wanted to know what we were going to do next year and the year after and the year after, and this is our answer. Thank you. I don't know if you'd like to add to that. 
Anything else? All right. Uh, thank you all very much.